Hey guys, welcome to some way, welcome back. Today's video, the new update on the F1, Aegis just released it. There's a whole list of things they say they improved. There's a couple of things that I'm interested in. Okay, let's do a regular takeoff here, and I go into the testing area and do some testing. Okay, first thing I do want to test here is the actual uh, turn speeds. Uh, I want to make sure that they haven't messed with that, that those are still correct as they were before. So I'm going to start about 490, 500 here. I'm going to go sustained turn. And what I'm doing here, I'm actually looking at the G's. So looking at the G's here, about 6 G's, 5.9, 5.8. That's pretty good. That is still on the mark. At this airspeed, that's about uh, 13, 12.8, 13 degrees per second. That is actually accurate right there. So the F1 is still accurate in that range. Let's slow it down a little more here, about 470, 460. And over here, we can see the Gs are still about 5.96. So at this speed, we got about 13, 13.1 degrees per second turn. So pretty good, pretty good so far. Let's slow it down a little more, under 450. Let's go about 430, 420. So here, okay, now at this point, the G's are a little bit less, about 5.5, 5.6, uh, and that, that's pretty good actually. So even though the G's are less, because of the lower speed, the, the rate turn rate here at about uh, these G's is about 14.1, uh, 14.2 degrees per second. So the sustained turn, and uh, we're just above sea level, about 2,000, 3,000 here. This seems pretty accurate, so they haven't messed with that. So good, good for ages. Uh, they fixed one thing, but they didn't mess another area. So. Now, next thing I want to do, this is the big thing I want to test, is I'm just going to pull all the way back, um, uh, slowly all the way back. So I'm going to pull, I'm going to slow it down. This is in instantaneous turns. I want to see how far down I can slow down this airplane. So at one point, I'm going to go full stick back, which in the real plane technically shouldn't happen. If you go full stick back under 300 knots, it should stall one way or the other, uh, whichever way the plane stalls. Over here, I'm full stick back now. Uh, and the airplane is still slowing down. Here we go, 180. Oh, good. Okay. We're low there. Pull, pull, pull. Let's roll it out. Make sure we're not losing altitude. We want this test to be accurate. So, okay. Here, uh, about uh, nice. 165. 165. I'm pulling all the way back, and. Uh, yeah, they slow down all the way down to 165 knots. That's 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 great. That's a much much improved airplane. Before when it first started, it was about 260 was the most you could slow down to, uh, and then next release was about 220 if I remember, and then now this release it's about 165. So they're getting to that point. I think 140 is uh, or below actually is where it should go to. But still 165 at this point you got to use those rudders to to maintain that nose too so uh, good awesome uh, I, I love this this new update so next thing I do want to test is uh, slow flight just for the heck of it why because I love doing it a few days ago I actually did it in, in a real airplane I hadn't done it in a long time so I had forgotten how, how relaxed the controls get the slower speeds you don't get that air resistance so uh, same here I'm about 120 125 uh, I'm pitching up, ignore the sounds guys, hey, this is flying, if you're a pilot, you got to put up with these sounds, if you don't like them, you know, get out of the cockpit, basically, that's what I'm going to tell you, so just put up with these sounds, uh, they're music to my ear, so, uh, anyway, let's, let's keep talking about this, because right here, 120, perfect, uh, we got, I don't know, what is it, about 85, 90, eh, it should have a little more, or power thing at this point. At this point, uh, honestly, if you even if you go full afterburner, you, sh you, sh you shouldn't uh, basically um, speed up uh, because of the high angle of attack. But there we go. Nice. Now at this point, uh, you, you want to use the rudders to to turn the plane. So you basically roll and roll it with the rudders. If you use the aileron, you're going to stall one of the other wings, and then you're going to get into a, into a wing over and possibly spin. So uh, using those rudders, nice and easy. Yep. <laughs> real life stuff this you can do this right uh, you know you can fly the airplane at the edge so now one more thing I want to check is the uh, wing over which is the stall that Aegis had uh, not every airplane has this every plane should have this basically so if you if you're close to stall big angle of attack high angle of attack you put in full ailerons uh, you're going to stall the wing, opposite wing and you're going to roll over to the opposite side so let's do that over here Yep, 
there he goes perfect okay relax let's, let's pull out of this one so far what I'm testing everything says either remain the same which was good level or improved which is great so one more thing I do want to test this is a, a, a this is a test of simulator planes to you that I, I do to find out how accurate some of the drags and power settings are. So, uh, how do we do this? Well, actually, the airplane is very light over here. I've used up a lot of the fuel, so instead of doing it about 320 knots, I'm going to do it about 290 or so. So, I'm going to go al almost ground level, just above the ground. I'm going to go into military power, and I'm going to pull about three, three and a half G loop. Okay, so no, leave it at, at uh, military power. Try to keep it steady because uh, the airplane can't go to one or the other side because it's slow. So, okay, over the top here. Yes, it's about 100 knots. And yes, it will fly. Uh, stall happens because of the angle of attack, not because of the, uh, of the speed. So, if the airplane is balanced right for the simulator, for the sim, we should end up just above the ground. And we are just a little bit, a little bit too high. But I think that it has to do more with a with my weight because my weight is below the, the testing weight so let me actually bring it down to about 270 280 and, and try it again and this should work out perfect here so okay let's do this again nice and easy three three and a half g pull and then we're going to relax as we go up because we're going to lose that airspeed go at the top we're pretty slow almost fully relaxed just tiny pull on the stick as we come around keep it steady steady all right start pulling here a little more and whoa just made it just made it perfect perfect very very nicely balanced plane uh, uh, you can't do that with the afterburner. You have to do it in military power. So it's a thrust to weight ratio thing. So if you do this and you end up like 100 feet or 200 feet above the ground, uh, your airplane's not balanced. You got either too much thrust or too little drag. So one or the other. Okay, uh, last thing here. Let's go do a landing. Uh, landing is a pretty standard. I'm pretty light here, almost uh, empty on fuel. But. Uh, the, the air speeds for the Aegis, if I remember Aegis F1, they were always been a little bit higher for the approach, maybe 10, 15 knots. So instead of uh, doing 150, 160 knot approach, we're going to do about 170 here. And we're going to keep that. That seems to be working. And then as we get close, let's just reduce that power. And Okay, nice little drop there. But yeah, okay, got it almost to the center line that will bother me <laughs> for a little bit but uh, yeah let's keep it on the center line I'm not gonna use the parachute just because I like this rudder work to kind of keep it in, in the center line while well, the F1 is one of those that's very easy to to roll to one side so everything ages did at least from my point of view what I'm tested what I'm interested in has either been the same uh, which was very good to begin with or improved which is great so anyway I hope you guys liked the video Take care and I'll see you guys soon.